they don't have fleas, they're low maintenance. You don't have to take them to the vet regularly like a dog or a cat. But honestly, they make the best pets. It is definitely my passion. It's my job. It's everything I do. It's my hobby. I've been into them probably for about 38 years, ever since I was old enough to catch my first snake or lizard. <laughs> Eric LeBlanc shares his Californian home with huge lizards, snakes, and his three young children. The worst bite my daughter got was from a bearded dragon. He got bit in the head one time in the forehead by a ball python when he was about two. And he opened up one of the tubs after me and just startled it. Did it hurt, Larry? What? When you got bit? I got bit on the nose. <laughs> but did it hurt? It didn't hurt. I like snakes because then they're like kind of gentle with you. They don't really try to turn around and strike at you. When you start to tame it, that means you have to hold it, feed it, support it, and show you love it, and you're not going to hurt it. I think it's cool that she's passionate. They wanted to mess with them, and that's how I let it. I never forced them to hold snakes or anything like that. And while Eric is happy that his children are confident around the animals, he would never leave them unsupervised. I know what they are capable of, just like anything. It's just respecting it. When you hold the big one, like I was telling you, you can feel the muscle. Like she moves you. You can feel them just kind of holding you to feel secure. You can feel their strength. In this country, just everybody's got an opinion. People think it's safe to take their kids surfboarding, downhill skateboarding. I wouldn't take my kids to shoot guns. I wouldn't take my kids to do half of those things. I guess to each their own. Do I ever worry about my kids being bitten? Unfortunately, my kids have been bitten by a ball python, a bearded dragon. When I was a kid, I got bit by dogs. I got bit by a snake. My worst accidents was probably falling out of trees and stuff like that. So, I mean, when it's all said and done, they know how to approach them. They can definitely tell when something's agitated. They're pretty conscious of everything that's going on around them. They're absorbing it. Eric has always had a house full of exotic animals. This is Shelby. She's a lavender albino reticulated python, the largest snake in the world. This is a caiman lizard. They come from Peru. This is a pair of blue tongue skinks. <laughs> These are my kids' pets right here. This is a Dorner. This is a Nile monitor from Africa. This one has been my daughter's pet since he was about six inches long. He got gangrene in his tail, so we had to amputate it. This is Charlie, our male rhino iguana. Cuban rock iguana. He named him Knuckles because his sister chewed his fingers off when they were little babies. But recently, his house is even more crowded. After a fire in his reptile shop, he's had to bring a lot of injured animals home to recuperate. It was the worst tragedy almost of my life. If it had just been merchandise that burned, I can live with that. The fact that it was living animals is just something that's it's been hard. A lot of them were my kids' pets. They all had names. God, at the time, we probably had about six, 700 lizards, honestly. There was 100 geckos alone, and about 20 tegus, 10 iguanas, 20 monitors, tons of little skinks, and just different various lizards. A lot of stuff, unfortunately, died of smoke inhalation in the fire. Seems like a lot of them are still having respiratory problems from the smoke, and that's why it's a mess in here right now, and everybody's housed together. Thankfully, one of his most prized lizards, Jellybean, survived. Jelly Beans is seven feet, two inches. He's a crocodile monitor, third largest monitor in the world, next to the Komodo dragon out of Indonesia. Magnificent creature, really is. As you can see, he suffered a lot of burns. We got him medical attention and we're just treating him. We had to give him a whole tank of oxygen. As you can see, all the scales on his face. He made it to wherever the worst part of the fire was somehow. Now Eric is concentrating on getting his business up and running again and taking care of his injured animals. I'm gonna pray, keep my fingers crossed. So now we're just doing everything we can. These are all our pets. We've raised all these things since they were three feet long. Everybody's got a name in here. 